So I've got a potentially bad ROM chip here from my uh, Radio Shack color computer that I'm fixing right now. And uh, I've been uh, tracing the computer and scoping out the leads and whatnot. And uh, it, I'm, I suspect the ROM chip's the problem. Issue is, is uh, it's a custom part. Obviously, it's a programmed ROM. So uh, if I want to get a replacement, I've got to find someone who has a spare one, which is pretty unlikely. Or I have to uh, order an EEPROM or something online or an EEPROM and also have to buy a programmer in, to, in order to program the new ROM. Um, so I'm seeing if I can uh, at least test this out and make sure that this is actually a problem before I go do that. So I've popped it on my little proto board and I've got the proto board tied down to an old Mac battery which makes a great weight so it doesn't move around too much. Um, and I just got to wire this thing up and see what I get. So I've got my negative lead. I'm going to pop that in there. Um, or there was something else on this board before I started. Let's get these guys out of here. And I will jumper the negative to pin 14, which is the negative power lead VSS and then I will take a nice green one here from the positive and put that to the uh, positive input pin which is pin 28 on these ROMs this is a uh, 27256 there are two pins uh, chip enable and output enable that need to be tied low for this thing to work and those are pins 20 and 22. So what do we got? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, and tie 22 as well. 21, 22. Okay, so there we go, all tied in. Okay, so now I'm ready to test this out. Basically with the ROM chip, there are a number of input lines. On this one, there's 14 of them. Uh, depending on what you choose for the input lines, that will determine the output on the outputs that are here. There's eight output lines, so that's one byte at a time. This chip has 14 input lines, meaning it can address 32K. On the Coco, that 32K is actually mapped into upper RAM. Also on the chip, there's two chip select. There's an output enable and there's a, uh, a chip enable line. The chip enable line is tied to ground, so that means the chip is enabled. And the output enable is being fed with by a signal generator with a uh, pulse of about 500 kilohertz. So this should simulate pulsing coming from the computer system uh, and going into this uh, for a data read. So if we check my lines here, there's nothing, no signals on the addresses because they're grounded out. I should have five volts on the uh, this pin here. Uh, ground there, that's fine. And uh, chip enable is pulsing or output enable is pulsing right there. And I'll check my address lines and I'm getting nothing. This isn't looking good. There should be some data in there. I'm expecting a, a hex 45 on these lines and there's a hex 0 on these which means there is something wrong either in my circuit layout which I don't think there is or something wrong with this chip. So I'm gonna guess that this chip is actually blown and I'm gonna try a test on another chip. Okay, let's remove this. And we will place our second test chip in. Let's make sure these pins are aligned correctly, otherwise it's going to be unfortunate. We'll definitely blow it up. Okay, chip's in place. And uh, let's turn on the power. And see what happens. 
No, nope, I've got nothing on any of these lines. Nothing, and I still got my output enable signal going in. I'm actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the uh, I'm going to bring the chip enable to high and see if that makes any difference. It shouldn't. So that's high, and we got nothing. So this chip is also dead as a dodo. Thanks for tuning into my video and I hope that the material was educational for you. Please continue to check back on my channel and hopefully there will be more stuff that interests you. Thanks again.